This is Katie Myers, and she's going to talk to us about good leadership. Okay, I want to start off with an exercise. Everyone raise your hand as high as you can. Everybody, just raise your hand. Okay, now raise your hand one inch higher. Okay, good job. Everybody put your hands down. Most of you could go that extra inch, but why? I asked you to raise your hand as high as possible, yet another inch was still attainable. Good leaders are able to get that last inch of effort out of a group. What does it take to be a good leader? Style? Intelligence? Coordination? Nope. Apparently not. <laughs> what about example? Most good leaders can lead through example. We've all had that bad leader, whether it's your boss, maybe it was a manager, or even a teacher. Whoever that bad leader was, it was hard to work and enjoy your work while under them. There's a very good reason why so many companies have leadership workshops. There's actually a study done with 4,000 companies. 58% of those companies that had those workshops reported back that the workshops were not effective. They didn't create better leadership, causing inefficiencies in the company. Now take, for example, where I work. I work at the Fisher's Do-It Center, which is a hardware store for those of you who don't know. You probably remember it when you were little as the popcorn store, because we give out popcorn. When you walk in and you meet my boss, you wouldn't think he was my boss. Bert, I mean, you wouldn't even think he was the co-owner. He doesn't wear a dress shirt, doesn't wear dress pants, doesn't carry a clipboard. When you walk in, you'll often find him in a blue sweatshirt and in jeans. And if it's springtime, he'll be covered in dirt. Like, it's kind of funny. You're just covered in dirt. I'm not saying dirt, Bert is a dirty person. It's just he's willing to help us with the dirty work, whether it be loading chicken manure or dirt. He won't ask you to do anything he wouldn't do himself. And it's that kind of leadership that motivates me and my coworkers to work harder, work to our best advantage. I, on the other hand, I'm an older sister of three kids. I am actually the oldest. Growing up, I was often put in charge of my two brothers. Having to do this my whole life and keep management over them has given me leadership skills. So when my junior year came around, I joined a first robotics team. I was a complete rookie. Didn't really know anything. Thought I did. Apparently not. <laughs> and when it came time, one of my friends thought, hey, I'd be a great candidate for vice president. And you know what? I thought to myself, yeah, I would be a great candidate for vice president. So I dove in. I jumped into the deep end with the hopes and prayers of swimming. Honestly, I ended up swallowing a bunch of water instead. I kind of ended up washing up on the shallow end of the pool, you know, like the one foot kind of area where the little kids swim. What happened is when push came to shove, when build season came around, because first robotics teams, they're expected to fund, manage, and build a robot in six weeks to do a very specific task. Sorry, water break. <laughs> a little bit of drainage. <laughs> we were expected to do that. Eventually, I just began to micromanage. I was getting nitty gritty. I was watching the clock. I got so lost in keeping track of time that I forgot to help with my teammates. I wasn't being a proper teammate or a proper friend with helping to build the robot. And my micromanaging eventually became annoying and caused stress to other people that was just unnecessary. Having a good leader or a bad leader can greatly change the outcome of any project. So, I want to leave you with this today. Just imagine for a second if every leader had the skills and ability to get that one inch, that little extra bit of effort out of their groups. Thank you.